Day 13 in our Advent Calendar series today, we're talking about table views. And table views are probably the most versatile or the most used iOS component since you can easily use them to display any kind of data. And we're going to have a look at that with a simple demo application. So let's get started with Xcode, create a new project, table view example. And there are actually two ways you can work with a table view. Either you create a table view controller or you add a table view to a standard view controller, which is what we are going to do in this tutorial. And I'm going to tell you about the similarities and differences as we move along. And to get started, we're typing table into our object library and we're starting with a pure and simple table view. And I'm just adjusting the size here a little so that it fits the screen almost completely. And then I'm pinning it to my edges, also making it stretchable with the auto resizing masks. And we're using this pure and simple table view so that you know what components are part of it, what prototype cells are, we're adding them ourselves, and we're also going to add all of the related functions in code ourselves because a table view controller does that for you, so you will have no problems using a table view controller, um, but you will also know all the backgrounds of a table view to deal with that efficiently in the future. So what every table view needs if you want to display dynamic information is a prototype cell. Um, we are simply dragging a table view cell into our table view, which gives us a prototype cell. And this is going to be reused over and over again by the system. And this is done highly efficiently by iOS in the background. So you do not need to worry about that. But the important thing is for you to access that prototype cell in code to give it a reuse identifier. This is traditionally cell or something similar, but you could also use chocolate as a identifier. Just keep in mind that you have to remember it later. And we could also customize our table view now or our table view cell now adding a specific subclass to it. But we're going to do that in a separate tutorial. For now, we simply concentrate on a pure and simple table view. And to get started with our table view, we should create an outlet for it. So I am pressing control on the keyboard, dragging my table view to the view controller, and I'm simply naming it table view and we go back into the view controller. And now the first thing we need to do is adopting some protocols, which is the UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. UI table view table view data source. But if you just want to display information, maybe the UI table view data source would be enough. The delegate methods that are included here is first of all, number of sections in table view. What we want to do here is return one because our table view only has one section and a section is something like in the contacts app, if you have your contacts all sorted alphabetically, you get those little headings with A, B, C, D and these are different sections. And what we also have is number of rows in section here. We are simply returning, let's say 10 for now. We are going to configure that in a way that it works dynamically later. And the third one that is really important is cell for row at index path. This is the function that will let us configure each cell individually. But what we have to do now is to assign self for the delegate and the data source of our table view. So let's say delegate equals self and table view data source equals self. With that, we can use these delegates and their messaging function to get access to all of the important feedback that we get from the table view and also configure the table view. All of these functions are part of the data source delegate, but what we also need to do is maybe add table view did select row at index path. So let's search for that. Did select row at index path. And this is part of the table view delegate function. And as you can see, we still have one error here that tells us that we're missing a return in a function expected to return a UI table view cell. And this is the actually, I think most important function of the table view, which is cell for row at 
index path. So what we need to do here is return a table view cell, a configured table view cell. So what we have to do is create a cell object, use the table view and call the DQ reusable cell function with identifier. And this cell, cell, lowercase, cell identifier is what we entered in the storyboard. As I said, could be chocolate, but in our case, it's definitely cell. And the index path is actually the location of the cell in your table view. So this gives you a row and also a section if you work with sections. And with that cell, we can now configure every cell using text label and text, for example, for a simple hello world, which in our case, after we return this cell, would give every cell, every of our 10 cells that we have created in our one section, the text label with the text of hello world. And we're going to have a look at that in the simulator. And this should be our first table view. So here we are, we have 10 cells and each cell includes our string hello world. But this is of course not exactly what we want. We want possibly different kinds of strings, different data for each cell. So we're creating a very simple data model and I'm simply calling this array data and I'm adding maybe a shopping list bread, uh, salad, maybe eggs and chocolate. And this is now the data we'd like to display in our table view. So now that we have this array, we can configure each cell with the corresponding array element. And we do that by assigning our data array and the to access each element of our array, we're using the index path and its row property. And with that, our first cell gets the index gets the first element in our array, which is bread, the second salad, and so on and so on. And of course, we're starting counting at zero. So the index path is corresponding with the elements in the data array. And if we have a look at the simulator, we have an error, of course, we have an error, because we um, reached out of bounds with our self at index path function because we have at the moment 10 rows or 10 cells in our table view. So it is highly important that we use data and count the number of elements we have in our array for the number of rows in section because we only have as many rows as we have elements in our array. So let's have a look at that again. And this time we should see bread, salad, eggs, and chocolate. And this works pretty nicely. So this is how you configure each cell individually. But what if you want to do something specifically if you press on one of the cells? Again, you have to use a delegate function, which is now did select row and index path. And we could maybe say selected item is our object. And we want to access data from our array. So again, we use our data array and use the index path and its row to access the correct element in our data array. And then we could do a simple print statement item selected item selected. And then we can run this in the simulator again. Let's see what happens move that to the side a little. And if we now press on bread, we get item bread selected, item salad selected, and so on, and so on. Here you could transition to another view controller, load that information into the other view controller, or whatsoever. So this is a very basic implementation of a table view. Now, just as a last point, let me discuss what the difference between a UI table view controller and the table view is in a table view controller, you do not have to add those protocols, you do not have to adopt them, this is automatically done by the UI table view controller class, you also do not have to add them or to add self to delegate in data source, and you automatically get the table view object as a property of the UI table view controller class and all those functions here are automatically generated for you if you create a table view controller subclass. So this would be an example for that. You automatically get the number of sections, you get the number of rows in section, self index path, and some more functions that could be useful. But we are going to look at that 
in another tutorial. So thanks for watching today and I'll see you tomorrow.